Studies show that employing individuals with disabilities is good business. In face, Nebraska has talented people who want to work regardless of disability. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman and Ranking Member, for holding this hearing today. I appreciate it. Thank you to our witnesses for being here today. Uh, people with disabilities are living longer due to the advancements in medical technology and public health. And in order for people living with disabilities to achieve financial security, which is what we all want, uh, they want to have it during their working years and they want to have it in retirement, they need employment opportunities and supportive services to help them secure and maintain good paying jobs. And it's just absolutely vital. Studies show that employing individuals with disabilities is good business. Individuals with disabilities offer many advantages, including a highly motivated workforce, lower rates of absenteeism, and employer, and employer turnover, employee turnover, greater lo loyalty, and higher rates of satisfaction and productivity among the entire workforce. And as governor of the state of Nebraska, when I would talk to employers, one of the things they always said is, we cannot find enough people to hire. Maybe they just weren't looking in the right place. Nebraska has talented people who want to work regardless of disability. Back home in my state, uh, it's, we are working to make sure that um, we are affording opportunities to be able to hire people with disabilities and pay competitively for those talents. Individuals with intellectual or developmental disabilities in the workforce in Nebraska receive coordinated employment services through vocational rehabilitation, through a partnership with the Nebraska Department of Education, Nebraska Commission for the Blind and Visually Impaired, and Department of Health and Human Services. The partnership works toward competitive integrative employment that includes pay at or above minimum wage that is not less than what others without a disability are receiving for the same type of job at a location where the employee interacts with other employees without disabilities in comparable positions and has opportunities for adva advancement. The partnership also provides career counseling, employment information, and referrals to individuals with disabilities who want to work. So it is absolutely critical that we leverage all the talent in our country with this workforce shortage and make sure that people with disabilities have those opportunities. So um, actually, I'll start with uh, Mr. Mittman. And again, thank you very much, Mr. Mittman, for your service. You have extensive experience managing and working with disabled employees. Can you speak to some of the most common misconceptions about employing a disabled worker? Thank you, Senator. I believe <clears throat> some of the biggest misconceptions about employing people with disabilities is, is just the uh, misconception that they don't have the same skills as everybody else, because they do. Uh, I believe also that when it comes to accommodations on the, uh, the site, on the work, in the workplace, I think a lot of employers believe that there's a significant expense to those accommodations, which is just not true. I've seen a recent study recently where I think the average accommodation was $300 or something like that. So it's not, uh, it's a, uh, a miseducation of, of employers that uh, they believe that employing somebody with disability could bring additional liabilities and additional expenses. And I think those are the greatest common misper uh, misperceptions out there. So, Mr. Mimmon, you're running your own business. You know that hiring and training a worker is expensive, right? Yes, sir. Just a time. Uh, how would you compare the cost of, you know, attracting somebody to work for you and training them worth it versus the cost of the accommodation? Well, people with uh, um, disabilities have a very low turnover rate. They have a very low turnover rate. And when you when you bring somebody in and who's uh, struggled to find employment, they're very loyal to the organization. They have a lower absentee rate. They stay for a long time. So the investment in the employee is much cheaper um, and uh, costs a lot less than it does if you're having to turn over your employees all the time. So it's absorbed into the loyalty and the, uh, the effectiveness and the abilities of the individual. So, so would you say the benefit of the accommodation, which you said one study showed that was like three hundred dollars, the cost of the ex, you know, approximately three hundred dollars, um, is far outweighed by the benefit of having somebody who you retain longer because it costs so much to attract and retain people. Is that a fair statement, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. So it, actually, the cost benefit trade-off here for employers is when you hire people with disabilities who are going to um, you're going to be able to keep longer, you're going to have less turnover. Uh, going to be 
benefit, that benefit's going to far outweigh the extra cost of the accommodation. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm just about out of time. I just got one more question I'd like to ask Mr. Mittman if sure, I could. Sure, sure. Just Mr. Mittman, uh, could you talk a little bit? So given that we believe here that, you know, the cost accommodation is going to uh, be far outweighed by the benefit of the lower turnover rate, just one example. Right. What's the best way to educate employers about these misconceptions and overcoming some of these misconceptions? Well, I know at uh, Bosma Enterprises, as I mentioned, I had a dedicated team of individuals who assist people who are blind and visually impaired finding employment. And one of the things they do, one of their, their biggest tasks is as they're out assisting individuals find those employments, they're actually educating the employers prior to the employees showing up. And uh, sharing the experience and sharing what we're talking about, the long-term benefits of hiring somebody with a disability. But being in there and working directly with the employers is the best way. Uh, an active engagement of the employers is the best way to educate them on the benefits of hiring somebody who's disabled. Great. Well, hey, thank you, Mr. Bittman, again. Thank you uh, for being here, and thanks to all the witnesses for thank being you, here Senator. today. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Rick. Uh, people with disabilities are living longer due to the advancements in nurses to help them secure and maintain good paying jobs. And it's just absolutely vital. Theism and employer, and employer turnover, employee turnover, greater lo loyalty. And studies show that employing individuals with disabilities is good business. Indiv um, we are affording opportunities to be able to hire people with disabilities and pulling this hearing today. I appreciate it. Thank you to our witnesses for being here today. Great, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman and Ranking Member for holding him through a partnership with the Nebraska Department of Education, Nebraska Commission for the Blind, is we cannot find enough people to hire. Maybe they just weren't looking in the right place, medical technology and public health. And in order for people living with to pay competitively for those talents, individuals with intellectual or developmental disabilities in the workforce in Nebraska receive coordinated employment services through vocational rehabilitation, working years, and they want to have it in retirement. They need employment opportunities and supportive services to achieve financial security, which is what we all want. Uh, they want to have it during their